Hi everyone, it's a Thanksgiving miracle here, the internet's busiest music nerd. <laughs> and it's time for a review of this new Ashen Spire record, Hostile Architecture. This is the sophomore full-length LP of Scottish band Ashen Spire, a group that formed around 2013, dropped a debut album in 2017, and now five years later we have this sophomore record. I am just now hearing of the band through this LP. Their last one didn't really seem to stir up that much attention. This one is on the Bandcamp platform and beyond, and uh, just from spinning the first track of it, it's not hard to see why. That would be the song The Law of Asbestos, which is this aggressive blend of black metal, jazz, and prog rock, topped with feral, thickly accented rants. There's a bridge in the second half as well, which is hugely post-rock influenced with weeping strings, as well as desperately shouted poetry about the unlivable conditions faced by the unhoused and impoverished with mentions of breaths of asbestos, as well as homeless spikes. Despite this not really being an instrumental record, it's all pretty Godspeed-esque in my view. Given that we have a classical veneer over all these underground rock styles coming together, also taking into account the political leanings expressed on this record, uh, the large collective of instrumentation presented, and since the days of Godspeed You Black Emperor's heyday, I can only think of a few bands that have made similarly bold takedowns of poverty, especially one that that whittles the topical focus down to architectural corner cutting, a soundtrack by black metal style blast beats. So yeah, this track, this band, this record is unique out of the gate to say the least. And from the beginning of the second song on this LP, its holistic flow begins to establish itself. Because given how relentless and angry the opener is, the mid-paced riffs here and thicker mix just kind of makes sense. The change in pacing and momentum just comes off as very complimentary. But the lyrical themes here have uh, switched to something that is uh, even darker, arguably. The generational or even hereditary inheritance of misogyny with some astrological tie-ins on the lyrics as well. Uh, the frontman has some choice words for Orion at some point toward the end, which get kind of blood-curdling. If you couldn't already tell, I'm pretty impressed with the poetry on this thing. And as if the band's versatility wasn't already impressive, here comes the track Plattenbau Persephone Praxis, whose second half embraces almost a minimalist vibe, with all these repeating and slowly intensifying bits of reeds, drums, guitars, strings as well, and gets quite hypnotic even as we explode into these bits of blast beats toward the end. What the band is bringing to the table table here is maybe not the most novel thing on the planet, as I recall bands and projects such as Liturgy playing with a similar array of influences, but Ash Inspire certainly uh, has their own play on it. Of course, also the performance on this track is great, the band is sounding tight, and the lyrics are pretty devastating as well, depicting the demoralizing and soul-sucking grind of everyday life, the way living joylessly on the economic edge can drive one into a stimulant-fueled insanity. Following this, there's How the Mighty have Vision, which is a fantastic choral piece with an operatic edge to it. Much of the instrumentation stripped back, and I like that uh, not only is this track beautiful, stunning, and, and dramatic, but it provides a nice break from much of the heaviness of the rest of the album. Then from here, the track list offers some mid-sized cuts to fill out the latter half. There's Tragic Heroine, which features a lot of very hypnotic uh, prog and black metal inspired riffs that reminds me of uh, one of the last, like, Altar of Plagues records. Some fluttering strings as well that occasionally lock in uh, with the melodies of the lead vocals. And this song essentially feels like a very aggressive storm to match the calm of the previous cut. And I think instrumentally the band is trying to do their best to uh, inspire an awakening here, at least that's how it comes across in the lyrics, as much of the poetry on this cut boils down to uh, those who are living below the poverty line or in the gutter coming together to realize their collective power. There is a similar sentiment voiced as well on the track Apathy as Art Snick, lethargy is lead, where some of the sharpest social points on the entire project are made, depicting not only a working class hoping to not be uh, pulled further under by a system that is uh, set to work against them. I also think the palette of metal and, and jazz instrumentation kind of coming together uh, reminds me of bands such as Imperial Triumphant in the best way possible. Following this on track seven, we have uh, an okay instrumental song. Outside of the bits of horns and strings here and there, chord progression-wise, melody-wise, uh, it, it kind of sounds like a, a song that would end up on some random metalcore band's EP as a show that, uh, hey, 
we can get kind of emotional and dynamic too, guys. Like, it's not awful, but definitely mediocre in comparison with everything that has led up until this point. Still, I guess I can give the song props for uh, being a bit of a setup for the final track here, Cable Street Again, an incredible finish to this record, which is kind of difficult to sum up, honestly, as it is the longest and most complicated song here in terms of its lyrical nuances, its compositional nuances, its multiple phases. The relentless black metal inspired guitars and drums in the first leg are fantastic. The chilling keys and lyrics that sound like they are being delivered through uh, weeping in the act, uh, the second act right after that are stunning as well. From here, we eventually reach a final leg that paints a very ugly present day picture. Impending fascism, a system that is not broken but working as intended. One of the most devastating parts of the whole thing is this touch of meta commentary uh, where it is sung, if this is against the grain, meaning all the points being made up until this point, then the blight has really set in. Which is a pretty strong point to make because I think in moments of peril such as these, the only thing that can really doom us is uh, uh, an acceptance of everything that's going on as uh, normal or okay. One more part of the track that hits the hardest is the very, very, very ending, uh, which not only does so because of the incredible uh, instrumental performance up until this point, but it's parting words. There's no middle road, and I tell you, get down off the fence before the barbed wire comes up. That is a pretty strong warning uh, after. <laughs> A very strong album, in my opinion, from the immense and tight and fantastic performances to the writing to the song structures, to the uh, well-arranged layers of instrumentation, to the lyrical focus, to the conceptual ambition of this entire thing that uh, lasts from end to end. This is a truly stellar and amazing album from a band that frankly, uh, before a few weeks ago, I had just never heard of before. Proof that great work from relatively unknown artists is out there online if you're willing to dig for it. And hopefully you guys give this record a shot and find much of the same beauty and excitement in it uh, that I did. Feeling a light to decent nine on this one? Tran? Zition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Ashenspire, forever.